Hello and welcome back. This week we're going to have a look at this great level crossing. Catalogue number R414, the double track crossing, the Super 4. But we'd only work with first and second radius of course. We've got a couple of other models running here. We've got the diesel rail car in blue, catalogue number R157C, available 1970-71. to 71. And then we've got the old Princess Elizabeth there, catalogue number R258. And she has a couple of LMS Marine Livery coaches. She also has the synchro smoke and the chuff chuff sound which we nearly hear there so we may see a little smoke today. Just have a quick look at the old box that the crossing came in. Catalogue number on the end R414, double track level crossing. She first showed up in the catalogue in 1964 with the words underneath it available later. I don't think it was truly available in the shops till 65 and I believe it was available up till 69. Really terrific condition box. The inside part is just brown cardboard. We can see the effects of tape there. Really nice thing to have. We'll just pop that down. And the instructions are interesting in that they've got Triang Railways on them rather than Triang Hornby like on the box. But it is an old Triang Hornby box that. Great illustration. Shows you how the whole thing goes together and all the separate parts. There we have Rovex Scale Models Limited, Westwood Margate Kent. Really nice condition, nothing printed on the back. I think the idea with these was they could be used in the corner of the layout on the curves, as most of the straight pieces are always taken up with stations and points and other interesting things. Now we've got the first radius curve here and the second radius curve, we've got a ramp at each side. We've got the two separate parts which fit between each of the rail sections. And then we've got the part in the middle which separates the two, two tracks. And it's a really lovely detail along here and I think this is a cattle grid along the edges. I think that's a nice touch. And we've got sort of stone earth type work along here and here. A really nice thing. The gates are two separate mouldings as well. So we have this gate with a lantern on and no lantern on this side. A little bit dirty. They could be a little bit cleaner but sometimes it's better not to clean these things too heavily. We'll just slot those back down. They don't really clip in, they just slot in. They're quite loose, which is why they kept vibrating open whilst we were running the trains on them. Let's have a swift look at those two. There we go, really nice things. And we'll pop those back. Of course, this crossing would only work with first and second radius curves. The third radius curve didn't come along until 1968. We can see how each of the three main pieces clipped directly into the track. And then these pieces which lie between the rails are held in place by those clips as well. One of these tiny clips is missing, just a tiny end bit. We'll have a look at that in a moment. But really terrific thing, even from underneath. Just to be kind to this very old plastic, rather than pulling, pulling these clips out, I'm just undoing the rails, I'm just pulling them out gradually. And I'm gonna release them that way, rather than cause any, any damage to it. So there we go, we've got the rail out, and then that one. We'll just simply pull out, we can see these tiny little clips here and here and what we'll hold it into the sleeper bed under the rail and these just hold in place underneath those. They just hold each other together. Quite fragile I think, possibly more fragile now as the plastic has aged. These are the two pieces which sit between the rails. This is the small radius one. And this is where the DMU has been clipping it. We can just see the oil from the cog there. We'll just have a look underneath and we can see that that says small radius and the part number, large radius and the part number. Really great things. We'll just pop those down. And this is the piece which separates the two tracks. We've got Triang's name, made in England, the catalogue number and the part number. We'll just go look at the other side of that. Nice platform grey, the whole model really great. The ramps, one of these has one tiny clip missing, this one here. They don't have anything other than the part numbers on there. It's quite hard to see. I don't know whether we can just see that there. And then the other one. We can just see the part number there. Very difficult. It's very faint. You can barely feel it with the back of your thumb there. We have a couple of Hillman imps there on the carpet today. And two Simca 1300s, and we have a 
the blue Sunbeam Alpine, which I think is my personal favourite. And finally, we've got a single Ford Angular there. These were available between 1964 and 1972 as part of the Mini range. You can just see those gates vibrating open again there on the, on the level crossing. I think a small piece of blue tack would solve that. That chuff chuff sound would really drive your parents mad, wouldn't it? The Princess we've got running today is safely from the Hornby Railways period. And here we can see we've got the model number on the instruction sheet, R258. And I think that's a date there, either the 23rd or the 27th of the 11th, 1973. It's a very general instruction sheet, covers aspects of the track. It seems to have had a, a later label stuck on it relating to the power clip and how, how, to, how to correct it if it becomes loose. Let's we'll have a swift look on the inside here. It covers lots of aspects of the Hornby Railway system. We won't go into that now. I'm just going to quickly look over it. I think we've seen one of these sheets before. We'll just pop that down. So she comes in a Hornby Railways box, lift off lid type box. And then we've got the old model number on the end, 258 LMS 462 Loco, Princess Elizabeth. Must have been where the price was perhaps. So lots of tape on this box. We'll just pop that down, have a swift look at the Loco. If you want to look at the Princess Elizabeth in more detail, I'll leave a link in the description box to last week's video and one for the the diesel rail car as well. Doesn't she look wonderful in that bright yellow vac form tray? These excellent stickers with smoke, with exhaust steam, steam sound. Really terrific thing. She's very play worn. When I did get her, she was an absolute non runner. Took some coaxing back to life. There was lots of cat hair and carpet hair in the workings of this model, and she's very glossy compared to the earlier one we saw last week. And I couldn't resist making the old double track tunnel there using Pat Hammond's books and the Hornby W companion book, two boxes of track and the box that the princess came out of. I thought that was just a great thing to do with these items just lying around. I do have the old single track level crossing here, R495. Now this was available from 62 to 72 and this one comes in a, a trying Hornby box. Well, I don't think all the parts are the same age. So if you have a look at it, we can see we've definitely got some yellowing of the gates and the posts are much, much whiter. Yeah, it looks to me that this has been made up of, of several several parts at some point. These gates look older than the rest. You just lift that one out and have a quick look at it. Could do with a light clean. And that, that's just been painted in, in red. We've got these lovely metal stays in there, they've gone a little bit rusty, perhaps a, a tiny bit of cleaning on that. We'll just pop that down, have a swift look at the other one. This one has a slight mend in it. You can see there that the post has been re-glued at some point. So we'll just pop that down. We'll have a, a quick look at the crossing itself. So it's got nice detail on it. Really, it's quite intricate. And these posts just pop into the whole they do actually clip in so i'll just leave those where they are we'll just have a quick look at the underside here let me see how that just clips in so the, these ramps push in and then the center board between the tracks just clips into these holes here and you can see we've got triang's name Made in England, the model number and then the part number. Now this method of clipping the ramps in and then the centreboard between the two rails was used on a double track crossing, which I do have, but for some reason, I don't know whether it's shrinkage in the plastic over age, that you can't get these ramps in far enough to get the centreboards in, they don't, they don't match up with the clips. So I've been uh, unable to use that, not that I can actually get it on the layout. So I'll just remove those from the track so we can see them. And this one is missing, just part of one of the little clips there. And I'll just pop one of those down. And here we have the old centre board. You can see that that just clips in there. And just pop that in. Pop that one on 
there and that holds the whole thing together. So I think on the double track one, I don't know whether the, the plastic slightly shrunk, but you, you can't get, get these in between the rail and the track bed far enough to push this, to make these actually clip in. It's about a millimeter or so too short. It's very close. And here's the old uh, double straight track level crossing. R496. This is available between 1962 and 69. Again, really nice. Try and Hornby box. Quite an early one by the look of it. So we'll just swiftly open that brown cardboard inside. We still, still seem to have some yellow tissue in here. We'll just pop that down and have a swift look at the old instructions. We've got lovely illustrations on there. Just look at that. Really, really nice instructions for both the both the single and the double track there. Let's just look on the other side. A really nice thing. Just pop that down. Just a, a little look inside the, the yellow tissue paper. And we've got a set of gates. They're nice, bright white, aren't they? Half red discs. That'd be quite a nice thing to have on the old layout when I get room. So I'm going to just wrap those ones back up. Just put those to one side. And then we have one of the ramps, and one of the centre boards. It's these little clips, you don't seem to be able to get them far enough in to line up to line up with those to get them to clip together, which is a bit of a shame. Still, I don't have anywhere to put it on the layout, so we'll uh, deal with that another day. We'll just pop those bits down one side and have a Look at the rest of it, it's all in fairly neat and tidy condition. I don't think it's ever really been used by the looks of it. I'll just have a look at the final couple of pieces there. And we'll just leave those alone. I'll have to see if I can get another one of those and see if it has the, the same fold, maybe make an adjustment to it. Now I'm going to see if I can put that single track crossing in there and I'm going to have to move this catenary mast a few centimetres this direction just to try and create space for it. I think the, one of the ramps is going to be very close to the, the edge of that station and the other one might be a bit too close to this lamp but I'll put that in and then we'll have a look and see, see what we think. So we'll just speed this up so we don't have to sit around for too long. We'll get that mast off, put it just a few sleepers along, create a bit extra space and then we'll clip those ramps in. It's not as tight with the station as I thought, it doesn't look too bad. Remember this is just a toy. There we go, we get those posts in, they slot in quite positively, and then we'll stand those gates in, which could swing. They have benefited from a bit of a light clean there, and then we'll just put those Minix cars back in. It doesn't look too bad. Sadly, I was quite disappointed when I ran the old blue DMU through. It seemed to come straight to a stop. So I ran a couple of the other variants I have through. Here's the one from the mid 70s with the A7 head code. And it stops in the same place. And here's one from the early 60s. And this stops in the same place. And finally one from the late 50s with the Mark II couplings. And it stops in the same place. Just for comparison now, we'll have a look at another three models. Here we've got the R351, the Electra. Not a hitch coming through there, and then we'll get back through there and just have another look. Nice and smooth, just as expected really. Now we'll have a look at the old Princess R258 there, the chuff chuff sound. No hesitation whatsoever and back through we come. Just look at that. Straight through, just as we would want it to. And then finally let's have a look at our 753, the Bobo Electric. Straight through again, you can hear those lovely ribbed wheels on the steel track there. And then 
back and come. Looking at this, I was convinced it was the centre board causing a problem, causing the, the DMUs to stop there on, on the, uh, the layout. I thought it was a similar thing to the, the uncoupling ramps, but it's, it's not the centre board at all. I started having a look at the elevated sections and the, and the side walls, and because the, they don't affect the DMUs whatsoever. Who just pop that down? What it is, is these ramps, they bow up slightly here in the middle. I don't know whether that's due to age, and it comes up just enough to pull the wheel off the rail, the rail head there. Now the wheels on these DMUs and on the Hymax, as it turns out, have a very broad shoulder on them, which sits on the rail and it overhangs the track and it just lifts up enough to break the contact. Let's have a look at that again. And there we go, it stops every time. So this particular type of wheel set seems to suffer from this this quite badly. It's the, it's the width here to here and they simply overhang the rail and it just lifts it up and it just breaks the contact. I hadn't thought it was going to be that. I was convinced it was the, the centre board on, on the cogs here causing the problem or causing this to catch on the edge of the centre board, but it wasn't. That's just part of the fun, playing with these old toys. Sometimes things work as expected and sometimes they don't. Well, I'm going to have a great deal of fun working out a way to mill off a strip of plastic down each side of those ramps so we can let those wheels through a bit more efficiently. Well, I think that's about it for this time. So if you look back again next week, we'll have something else from this later Try and Hornby period. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye now.